concerned. Soon I'll be decayed, burned, and in an urn. My mom always told me suicide was no joke, and I choked up at the sound of the seven-letter word. Hurt. Filled my heart, afflicted by the urge to overdose. My innermost thoughts are carved into my temple's walls. By nightfall, these hieroglyphs would ooze red, diluted by tears in my handkerchief, kissing the lips of a bottle of booze for clues. I'm not an endless, never-ending sorrow, too. I tried to drown my demons, but they knew how to swim, so instead I became possessed, beginning to rewrite my history, going to war within words like worthless, fat, and more. Embrace the unseen crevices of my skin, and I lost the battle and the war. I can't take this anymore. I'm sore by the thought of waking up in the morning, mourning my desire to live in its entirety, bruised and beat by my own beastly reflection. I can't breathe. I can't anymore. I'm sorry. Sincerely, the old me. You don't know the weight of what you've been holding on to until you feel its release. My breakdown was my breakthrough too. That night, I realized life challenges can't paralyze me. See, those obstacles are made for self-discovery. So like Curious George, I explore within while I furiously forge my poor internal demons in regions like my heart where I reclaim stolen land and learn lessons school never taught me. You see, pain is only a feeling we attach stories to. When you manifest the way you look at things, the things you look at change, and that's when I changed and things started making more sense. See, happiness is a choice, and so is every other emotion. My past doesn't define me or you or you either. The only enemy that exists lies within, therefore I can only hurt myself, no one else. So that's when I got introspective and got to know me. Showering in self-love, finding my inner glow, slowly killing my ego and victimized mindset. These concepts should be easy to grasp when you understand that life is 1% what occurs and 99% how we react. External events can't govern our internal condition. Listen, if you're hunting for that one person to gather your broken pieces and transform your life, look in the mirror and realize that the instruction and guide lies in you. I now approve of myself before others have the chance to. I no longer live in fear because fear equals false evidence appearing real. Instead, I use that to learn. I got in tune with my mind body and spirit. This joy that's not radiating from me, it's kosher. You've been seeing my doshas and chakras that shocked me back into reality. My thoughts shape my current world. There's no need for me to search anymore. I adore this wonderful creation. The universe slaved over in order to bring it into existence. There is nothing here that is not me. I am in eternal connectivity. I have achieved the impossible. My history will no longer repeat. I went back in time and accepted it. I redesigned my future's blueprints. This butterfly has escaped its old cold cocoon, reborn into someone new. I see the world through a new set of eyes. My senses are heightened, it's a bit frightening. I can bear my beautiful reflection, bear. I no longer care what others have to say about me because their opinion is only a reflection of themselves and I am at peace with me. I never knew, I never knew if I could fall in love with anything other than debating suicide, now I'm restless, refusing to waste a second of my new life. Please remember that without the dark, you can't ever truly know the light. And lastly, when you rise each morning, never forget to show gratitude for receiving the precious privilege of being alive. Think, breathe, laugh, and love. Sincerely, me. Thank you. Hi again. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> um, so before I start, let's kind of all take a deep breath. <sighs> I kind of needed that too. Uh, <laughs> so there was a study done by Bronnie Ware, a woman who worked with the elderly that were on their deathbeds, and she documented their top five regrets before dying. And here's what the number one regret was, and I quote, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself not the life others expected of me. Let me repeat that. I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. And I wish I had come across this list when I was a kid. <laughs> now you're probably thinking, 
why the heck would she have wanted to know these things as a kid? Well, as a child, through my teenage years, I got into things like musical theater, student government, newspaper club, and so much more. And all of those things are great and all. But a few months ago, back in October, I sat down and I asked myself, who am I? Because most of us don't take the time to self-reflect like that. We don't take the time to evaluate ourselves and our lives and ask ourselves questions we don't get asked on a daily basis. So, again, a few months ago, I sat down and I asked myself, who am I? Not just who am I, but who am I really? And I reflected back into my childhood and started kind of peeling off those layers of social conditioning. And I came to find out that the person I swore up and down I was up until that day was not who I really was at all was not who I really was at all. Now, as I had mentioned before, I had gotten into theater, student government, newspaper club, and I came to realize that I was doing those things not for me, but for the acceptance of my parents and my peers, which is why I was never satisfied, which is why I fell into depression, which is why I led myself to self-destructive tendencies, and I didn't realize it until I sat down and thought about it that day. I asked myself things like, are my interests even mine? Can my passions coexist with my current career path? Are my passions even mine? Do I work whatever jobs I work for me or because this is what someone else thinks is best for me or what someone else wants me to do? You really have to sit down and think, this is your life. You wake up every morning in your body, you take a walk in your own shoes, you look in the mirror and this is your body. This is your life. Are you living it for you or are you living it for other people? All of these other people that you're trying to gain acceptance from, do not live your life. They don't wake up in your body, they don't take a walk in your shoes, they don't carry out your daily activities or work your job. Therefore, you shouldn't be living your life based off of what other people say or expect from you. You should be living in your true authenticity. And if you're not living a life true to yourself, deep down, you're going to be bitter. And I hate to break it to you, and you can be in denial about this all you want, but you're going to be miserable, and I know this from experience. <laughs> Look, I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you the cold, hard truth. I want you all to realize that someone who isn't living a life true to themselves is not living. They're merely existing. Let me repeat that. Someone who is not living a life true to themselves is not living. They are merely existing. Living a life for someone else is not living. Working a job or nine to five that you're not passionate about is not living. Changing the way you act, speak, or dress for the acceptance of others is not living. Burying your talents, shoving them, neglecting your true passions is not living. Let's face it, the life you're probably living right now is not living. And I came to that realization a few months ago. I was doing what others wanted me to do to make them proud of me. I wasn't living a life that I wanted and I needed to change. So I sat back and I thought to myself, these things that I'm doing, this life that I'm living, is this really me or is this what others want and expect from me? And as a kid, I didn't have the mental capacity to choose whether I wanted to do these things or not. My parents would kind of just tell me to do something or put something in front of my face and I'd be like, okay, mommy, okay, daddy, because that's what's expected of us as children. And that's okay. I came to terms with that. I didn't put the blame on other people because I was merely a product of my environment and not of my own evolution. What really mattered at that point was that I came to the realization. I recognized the need for change and with that, I had to learn to accept these changes I was going to make because change is a never-ending journey. As humans, we're constantly evolving. Our physical bodies, our thought processes, and even our brains are constantly changing. Therefore, we need to learn to accept what is, what was, and what will be before we can even attempt to make a change. And once I did that, I could finally embrace all forms of change. The poem that I performed when I first got on this stage was all about change. The changes I needed to make, the ones I had made, and the result from the changes I did make. That was me trapped in a cocoon that society, my environment, and stereotypes forced me into, and that was me breaking free from that shell and transforming into who I really am. Now, maybe I can think this way because of my youth, and your age doesn't really matter. Age is an illusion, but let's not get into that right now. <laughs> Try to remember when you were my age, 17, and you were opening your eyes to a world of change around you. Ladies and gentlemen, change your thoughts, and you change your world. 
Recognize need a change, accept the change, embrace the change. Thank you.